I think this is a really good example of one of those, one of the old vintage tools that actually outperforms what normal power tools would be. What I've done in the past has always been Milwaukee cordless drills, half inch, you know, big heavy duty drills. And this is a, is a much more enjoyable process. It uh, works better, it's truer, the holes are, are nice and clean because it's, you know, it's mounted on a drill press, it's more precise and it's a, oh, it's a, it's a delight. It's a delightful tool, tool um, to use. Same process on the other side. That's why it's nice to take a moment to lay everything out at once rather than have to get your tools out twice and change all your layouts. Get it all done at one time and then you can just work so much more efficiently. So when I was doing research for making, getting ready to make the decision to purchase my timber framing tools, these uh, most of the stuff that I have is pretty old vintage things. A couple things that I purchased new because I just wasn't, I wasn't able to find a good inch and a half and a two inch framing chisel. So I bought new ones uh, from an English company called Robert Sorby. They're a tang chisel. Um, they're uh, reasonably affordable and I've, I've had good luck with them. They've holding the edge really good and they're just, they're really, they've been really durable. So most people would, would say in everything that I read that you want two timber framing chisels and I would agree uh, a two inch and an inch and a half. However, you can look at the coloration on the handle and you can tell which one I like better and it's not the two inch. The inch and a half um, to me is so much better balanced and I have, feel like I have better control of it, better depth. It just is a, it's just my favorite. I, I don't hardly ever use this one. I really primarily only use it for the very finishing stuff up and cleaning out. It is useful enough that I would recommend you get one. I think you need to have both. A tool that I will be, will, will be using together today for the first time also is a corner chisel and I've never used one before. This one here, uh, I built the handle for it, oh, I don't know, a year or two ago. I have some video on that uh, and sharpened it all up, but we'll use that today too. I'm excited about that because we'll, this is designed for cleaning up those corners. And I mean, it's, it's something you could probably get away without. I, I never had one, but I, I know every time I was chopping a mortise that I, I wanted one. So that's something to consider as well. So. Uh, first thing we need to do is to put a really good edge on our chisel. I keep them pretty good so it shouldn't take long, but it's always nice to just address them up a little bit. And for that, we'll use the diamond stones. This is one of those things that I resisted buying for a long time. And I, uh, I love it. I, this was one of the best things I've ever purchased. I find I've used it for all sorts of things. Uh, even the timber framing chisels, they, they work, they seem to work, it's easier for me. I know there's a lot of schools of thought out there on these and, and you know, those of you who watched the video that I did with, uh, at Edge Pro, at Factory Tour, um, they were of the belief that diamond stones weren't, uh, they weren't any good for sharpening. And, and you know, that was, that was one man's opinion. And, you know, when I heard that, that made sense to me. Um, but he was saying that basically that the diamond is so much harder than the medium that it holds it, it, it holds it or binds it in the stone that eventually it, the diamonds start to move and it becomes ineffective. And that just makes sense. I, you know, I look at it intellectually, but what I've, what I look at now is, it's, you know, I've had these, what, I don't know, maybe six months, time goes by maybe a year. And I use them a lot, a couple times a week. And there's just nothing better. <laughs> I mean, they're flat. They, they take material off really good. The way this here system setup that I have with the three, the coarse, medium, and the super fine, um, I've got a video on that too. This is, was Paul Sellers, kind of the way he did it. And it, it's wonderful. I can clamp it in my vise like you see here, and I have a nice, stable place I can do it. And it's, uh, I, I love them. I just would, would hate to go back. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flatten that back. You see, when we get the flat, you can see where the polish is. A flat in the back of it, that's the most important thing. And then we can work on the edge. And timber framing chisels are actually um, really simple to sharpen because they just have a, a, a chisel bevel. You can see there. So all I've got to do, and the bigger ones are easier, is to rotate that up there until I can feel that I'm on the flat and push. It takes a little bit of skill, but you'll develop it. 
over time and you can you can just you can feel when you're on the edge you can feel it cutting you can see the liquid kind of going out before there there's just all your senses are engaged here as Paul says and and you you just get it you get a knack for it and get that muscle memory going and just be consistent it's the most important thing a technique that's been just exceedingly helpful for me with these big chisels is when I bring the chisel to the to the stone right here is to is to press that that handle that long handle on my forearm and that gives me some consistency and I can pull up against it find my angle and be very consistent in my sharpening and I'm only using the super fine I don't need these chisels are in good shape I don't need to go back and reprofile anything I don't need the coarse don't need the medium just the super fine and then the last thing I'll do is I'll rest it flat and give it a little pull just make sure that I don't have any kind of line up that wire that's on there and that bring it up here that that right there is really sharp so how sharp is it well it's very sharp and keep in mind this is a big fat heavy piece of steel take a look at our work here I really uh, really like that method of chopping mortises it's just day and night compared to what I how I used to do it and all the aggravation I never look forward to it this is actually a, a joy and look at look at how tight the tolerances are anywhere I stick this this is a two inch should go in there nice and tight like that all the way across clean edges straight lines straight side walls I have to say um, that cutting a two inch mortise with a two inch chisel, it works better. I'm just going to have to get used to using the, having the extra weight in the bigger chisel because it's the first time I've cut a mortise with that, but it's, be it's better. So here's the flip side, the second side mortise. That uh, uh, again looks good just like the other one, really nice and clean. I'm real happy with that. So we've got, what do we got? We've got about a I don't know, maybe three quarters to an inch of wood, maybe probably three quarters or so to a half, possibly still in there. So how do we get that out of there? Well, we just repeat the process. We're just going to do the same thing. We'll go down here and start working it back. Pull your chisel back a little bit. When you do that, what that'll do is that'll kind of break the fibers on the side. Just keep working back each one We'll go deeper and it won't be long here that we'll break on through to the other side. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. Yeah, you should both see that there. So just the same thing. Now that once we break through, then it's a downhill battle. It's always it's much very simple. Here's where the chickens come home to roost in regards to our layout. <laughs> How'd we come together there? Oh, that's nice. That's nice. It's not a easy thing chopping a six or two inch mortise into a six inch piece of dried old hard fur. But with that technique and the sharp tools, you can, that's a really good. I'll usually just take care, take my uh, inch and a half chisel and just clean it up a little bit. Knock down any little spots I, I, I didn't hit. But boy, that couldn't be any better. That just came out perfectly. There you go. That's what happens when you pull all your measurements off of a controlled 
uh, the same area. So, oh, I forgot, we're gonna do the corner chisel. So you can see right there, again, I've never used one. We'll, we'll try it out here, it's right there. You can see a little, little stepped areas. Those are little areas that'll give you trouble like that. It's kind of hard to get with a chisel, I think. Maybe that's what the corner chisel is designed for. Let's flip it up and try that out, see if it's something that is worth having. You know, actually these corners are so clean, I don't, just don't know how necessary. Oh yeah, I mean, it's especially, actually works pretty good, especially when you get down in there and the, where it's hard to get. Got a lot of twist in that timber. I would say, this is a probably more of a luxury than a necessity, but sometimes luxuries are luxurious. All right, we're back to the design mode here. All right, so we gotta figure, make, make a couple decisions here. So here's our post, here's our angle. This is gonna be buried in the ground, right? Not to scale. So the cross piece, here's our, here's our mortise that we just cut. The cross piece is gonna come out like this. All right, the mailbox is going to sit up here. It's going to go through, the tenon's going to go through here, like that, and then a knee brace, like this, right there. Just like they built the old ship. So, question is, is do we want this angle, does it look better to go this way, towards the cross brace, or does it look better to go this way, like this, and then the cross brace, like that? So you can probably start to visualize it now. All right, so here's, here's our quick, I think it looks kind of nice when they run out beyond that like that a little bit, huh? You think you just run, run that beyond, maybe what? It's not very much, just a few inches. Something like that, that's where it's gonna go through. And then the knee brace right in here, nice big, big radius there. Oak dowels, dowel that in there, it'll be strong. Look fabulous. I just can't decide on this angle here. What's it gonna be? If we should go, what do you think? This gives us a little bit better perspective than my sawdust drawing. This way here? No, I don't, don't think I like that. I don't think that looks as good. This way here, or let's see, this way. Yeah, I think, I think that looks better. I think it looks better like that right there. Mm -hmm. 